Hollywood learned early on that movies about the Old West could pack a theater. People liked stories with easy to spot good guys and bad guys. The chases, the stagecoaches, the shootouts. But Hollywood also learned early on even the most successful formula needs a little spice. So it invented the singing cowboy. Oh, ain't anybody can steal my heart as long as I got my dog. Following Ken Maynard, there was the greatest singing cowboy of all, Gene Autry. <laughs> After Autry came Roy Rogers, Marty Hale, Patsy Montana, and Eddie Dean. While there were more famous singing cowboys, no one in Hollywood had the kind of career as this man, Herb Jeffries. Already a star in 1937 as a singer with the Earl Father Hines Band, Herb Jeffries decided he liked to make singing cowboy movies like his idols Gene Autry and Roy Rogers. So he did. Now I am confessing, got that gambling craze. Well, I learned my lesson, oh, I'll be broke for 30 days. Showing off the voice that made him a hit with the Father Hines band, Herb Jeffries sings and stars in the Bronze Buckaroo. Jeffries says his inspiration to make an all-black western came from a crying child, a black child he saw being questioned by a white boy. And he said, well, why are you crying? He said, well, uh, we're playing cowboy and they don't want to let me play. And so one of the boys said, why? He said, because I want to be Tom Mix. And they said, I can't be Tom Mix because Tom Mix ain't black. And so that struck me uh, rather deeply. And so I thought about that for a few days while we were on the road. And I said, gee, why don't they make some black cowboy pictures so these little children can relate? In most cases, Jeffrey's films use scripts already used in white westerns. When asked if these films unfairly projected blacks into white culture, Herb Jeffries offers a bit of a history lesson. The white cattle men uh, discovered that to use black drovers to bring those cattle out to the west, the Indians wouldn't attack them, while they would attack the pale face. See, so there were many black cowboys, black drovers in the history of pioneering our country. His five singing cowboy movies had turned Herb Jeffries into a Western star, popular with white as well as black audiences. But in 1941, he would change his tune. Domingo, like a flame in the sky, flying over the island. To my lover nearby. The Duke Ellington hit Flamingo would launch Herb Jeffries' career as a pop vocalist. Now I was with probably the number one band of the world. This man was just composing and composing great music that will go down in time as perhaps one of our most prolific and greatest composers of, of all times. Fifty years later, Jeffries still does one night concerts and club appearances. Fifty years later, the singing cowboy is around, too. Ladies and gentlemen, right here is a guy who rode the range as the bronze buckaroo. And somewhere along the way, he lassoed his favorite flamingo. Mr. Herb Jeffries, give him a big hand there. Hollywood's Gene Autry Western Heritage Museum paying tribute to the singing cowboy. Along with Herb Jeffries, there was Marty Hale, Patsy Montana, Eddie Dean, and of course, Gene Autry. On this day, these cowboys were singing Herb's praises. He's a good friend and a great singer. And he was a good actor, too. He's just a great guy. Great guy. He treats you so many ways, you're bound to like some of them. <laughs> Gene Autry remembers black cowboys. They would compete in a rodeo he sponsored back in the 30s and 40s. When I had that rodeo, I think it was about five or six uh, black cowboys had contested in the rodeos. And uh, Jeffers was one of the few that I know of uh, uh, that was a uh, black singing cowboy. Thrilled to be acknowledged by his peers, Jeffries was also touched by a fan. Rope and whip artist Rex Purifoy credits his success to Herb Jeffries' westerns. I just kept up with it over the years from that time on, from seeing those movies. I developed to be a professional trick rope artist, uh, whip artist, my own three horses. I have them trained to do all types of tricks through by Herb Jeffries. 
they were telling me that you came uh, hoping you would be able to meet him. Now that you see him, is he everything that you uh, yep. expected? Uh, yeah, wonderful. he's everything, but he looked better than I thought I was going <laughs> to see him. <laughs> the renewed interest in his singing cowboy days inspired Herb Jeffries to write a song. When the sun sets in the hills of Oklahoma Herb Jeffrey still books about 50 concert dates a year. Now he'd like to record an album of cowboy songs. And at 81, he wants to do just one more Western. There's so many wonderful things that were in cowboy pictures that keeps the interest of the little boy and little girl that, that grows up inside of us. So all over the world, all over the world, yes. For Classic Hollywood, I'm Peter Jones.